Hello, hello, hello. My name is Sadek Shahadu. I am the West Africa Language Coordinator at Art and Feminism and also the um, Executive Director for the Dagwan Wikimedians User Group. I am also serving on the um, Wikimedia Language Diversity Hub Steering Committee as one of the committee members. And this research is one of the initiatives that we have uh, embarked on uh, since last week, uh, last year, we've been doing this uh, particular um, research uh, des design and development. And um, one of our partners are Wiki uh, Media Foundation and also the Wikimedia Norway and Art and Feminism. We also have uh, other co um, partners like Wikimedia UK. And on this particular research, I'm representing Art and Feminism, and we would like to engage um, the Grundy Wikimedia Committee about um, the research and how um, their language is faring and how we can better understand the challenges that they face and how we can provide solutions for them. Um, so um, before the interview, I would like to remind you that um, we are recording the interview, so try to speak one at a time and clearly so it is easy to hear what you, uh, you have said on the recording. Also remember that you are not talking to just me, not, you are not just talking to me, you are talking to others who are participating in this research and not everyone would know your community as much as I do. So try to speak clearly and also try to elaborate on things that uh, people will better understand you. Um, first of all, I would like you to introduce yourself to us, your name, uh, what you do, and the community that you represent. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Mohamed Kamaluddin Fuseni. Uh, my username is DN Shitobu. Um, I am the project lead for the Guruni Wikimedia community. Um, I've also served as a project manager for the Guruni Wikimedia community. The Guruni Wikimedia community is, uh, is one of the burden communities under the Dagbani Wikimedia user group, um, just like the Mori Wikimedia, user, uh, Mori Wikimedia community. Um, it's a language community that is currently in the incubator and um, we are putting up articles. Okay. Um, so my first question would be, could you tell me about um, or describe your language and its state on the internet? I mean, the Guruni language. Yes, yeah, so the, um, the, Guruni is still, the Guruni language is still in the incubator. And because it's still in the incubator, um, we are still um, coming out with articles, stop articles and expanding them. Um, a lot has happened. We've managed to translate the most used, uh, most used media wiki statement up to 100%, so that um, when we finally get our own uh, Wikipedia, that is a Gruni Wikipedia, uh, we'll have all the major buttons um, being in Gruni. But at the moment, we are still in the incubator stage, and all our articles are still having the prefix WP slash GUR. That's the language code. Okay, so in generally, how would you describe the status of Guruni language on the internet? Oh, um, generally, the Guruni language is not so much online because uh, uh, very little literature or resources can be found on Guruni language when you search even on Google. Um, you can search so many um, search engines, but you'll find very little sources. So I think um, th this Guruni Wikipedia um, it's one of the big time resources we are bringing on board to digitize the Guruni language. Excellent. Um, could you also describe, um, you know, tell us why you decide to participate in this um, research? Okay, so um, what is so important for me, uh, as far as this research is concerned, is the fact that we are trying to digitize the language, that's the Guruni language. The Guruni language, as part of the 60 Moli Dagwani languages, um, stands the chance of extinctions if it is if it is not digitized on the internet. We are all aware of the UNESCO's research that proposed that over 700 languages are at the verge of going to extinction. Who knows? Maybe Guruni language is one of the languages, and um, if efforts are not made, like what we are doing at the moment, trying to digitize Guruni. On, the, uh, on one of the five most visited websites, which is Wikipedia, um, chances are that the Guruni language will be lost. So for me, digitizing the language has been my biggest goal, and that is why I'm participating in this research. Great. Um, so I also want to know, can you describe how you became a contributor to Wikipedia in general? 
Okay, so um, how I became a, a contributor, I, I, heard of, I heard of the word Wikipedia long ago, but um, I think the first time I had a chance to participate in a workshop was in 2016, but I created my account in 2019 and started active editing thereof. So um, I think the Guruni language uh, incubator um, just came on board recently after we had envisioned that we needed to digitize other uh, Moli uh, Dagbani languages. So when I started editing Wikipedia, uh, the English Wikipedia, the Dagbani Wikipedia, and Wikidata, uh, until we got the, um, the Guruni incubator, I was just always on the Dagbani Wikipedia and the English Wikipedia. Okay, so what do you remember your first encounter with Wikipedia, was it a workshop or an invite to an online program or something? Yes, yeah, so um, my first encounter with Wikipedia was a workshop. A friend posted something on his status um, asking people, the first, the question that got me uh, entertained and wanted to be part of it was, that you want your voice to be heard on Wikipedia? Do you know that the things you read on Wikipedia are kept online by people like you and I with references. Then when I saw this, I was like, wow. So if we go to get uh, feeds, like uh, get data from Wikipedia, which is written by others, why don't we all get on board so that we can write about our culture, write about the place we come from, write about like the things that is happening in our part of the world that is not known to those who are out there writing on Wikipedia that we always read from. So I think that was my first encounter, from a WhatsApp status to a workshop, accounts creation, and here we are. That is incredible. Um, I'm really excited to hear this and how you've been involved in several other communities aside from the Gruni Wikimedia community. And my next question would be based on technicalities. Um, I want to know, can you describe the process of writing a Wikipedia article in your um, language? Okay, so um, to write a Wikipedia article in Guruni, first of all, you need to um, search on Google, depend upon the kind of topic. If you are going to write a biography about someone, definitely you would want to check on Google to be sure that there are uh, well digitized sources or uh, well referenced sources for, so that the person will be added to the class of notability. Uh, if the person doesn't meet the notability guideline, it means the person cannot be on Wikipedia, regardless of whoever the person is. The person might be notable, all right, but uh, once he's, he has not been covered so much in, on the cyberspace, he cannot be created an article for. So after checking for this, you now come into the incubator. Um, we have search in the uh, incubator, Wikimedia incubator. Then you put the title there. Once you search the title, and you don't get it, and you get a red link, it means it doesn't exist. But if you get a blue link, meaning it exists already, there are times you need to um, search in different formats. For instance, um, you are searching about Ghana. Someone might have written an article about Ghana by omitting the H, which is gene A-N-A, Ghana. So you need to kind of inflect the spelling just to be sure that you are not duplicating um, an article, you are not duplicating the efforts. So once you search this and it's a red link, you tap on it and you are good to go. Great, uh, interesting to know. Um, so um, my next question is, how do you select an article to write on Wikipedia? Wow, very interesting. So to select an article to write on uh, Wikipedia, more often than not, um, I just go to stop articles or I go to uh, recent changes. If I go to recent changes, I see what other, what other people are writing about, then I can, it can spark my interest. But there are times, uh, maybe when I visit a new location, the name of the community, or the name of notable people, or notable things I see there, or anything I, f I, I search on English Wikipedia, that I feel is existing there. I feel like, no, this thing should exist in our language too. It should exist in the Gruni uh, incubator, which will in future become a Wikipedia. So let's say, even if I'm searching about technology, 
technology or English Wikipedia. Technology should actually be on the Gruny uh, incubator, so I'll go ahead to create um, an article. So whatever I search on the English Wikipedia, I want to reflect that. I want it to reflect in our language Wikipedia. Okay, great. So do you usually translate from other language or um, languages to Gruny language on Wikipedia? Yes, exactly, because uh, majority of the things we write on usually don't have content already in our language. So the only option is just to um, scout around on either the English Wikipedia or generally on Google. Like you get sources from different websites, then you um, kind of you translate that into Gruny. Then you now use the references to back that up, just to tell people that, okay, uh, this idea is coming from website A, website B, website C, just to make it look credible. You are not seeing it from your own words, so that people don't come to uh, flood the whole uh, incubator for us with their own personal thoughts. So we, we kind of scout on Google just to get well-referenced sites in order to translate into Gruny. Great. So my next question on technical challenges would be, um, what are the ma major technical challenges for contributors on your language Wikipedia? For instance, uh, typing in um, characters other than the Latin characters or any other technical challenges you may be aware of? Okay, so one of the technical challenges we have is um, the is with the use of the, um, the Latin characters. Gruny is a language that has got, uh, I think, about six uh, Latin characters which ordinarily can be not be found on the normal keyboard. Sometimes you have to uh, download an additional keyboard. And um, more often than not, majority of our, of our community participants use their mobile phones. So uh, once they use their mobile phones to, um, to do the editing, some of them do not have enough space. And as a result, they are not able to download some of these applications. And those who are working on the on their laptops, they have to use like three buttons in order to get um, uh, the Latin characters. They have to press on Shift, Alt, uh, sorry, Shift, and it. Editing on the uh, edit source mode is actually very difficult. Again, a uh, majority of the people consider themselves in quote, not technically inclined. And <laughs> because of that, uh, when you are even telling them about adding sections, just even in the visual source mode, some of them, like, just because they have made up their mind that this is related to ICT and me, I am not very good with ICT. Sometimes it is in, that in itself is very challenging for us, but we are making conscious efforts. Again, one of the big, cha uh, big challenges we face um, is uh, data issues. They come for training, and um, when they go back home, <laughs> you find the incubator very silent. And when you call to ask them, oh, so what is happening? Majority of them will tell you that um, data is very expensive and we can't afford data, a whole lot of stories around that. So because of that, um, it slows down the whole process. So sometimes we need to, or we usually just call them for an editor tone, just for them to use the data we have in order to contribute on the incubator. Great. Um, so. Um, now that we know the technical challenges, I would like to know um, if, like, so what do you, people in your community, what devices do they normally use to contribute to Wikipedia? More than 90% use um, their mobile phones because I think um, the biggest uh, group of our uh, community is made up of students. And these students um, usually use mobile phones. Um, just 10 percent, let me say, on the average, use their laptops um, to do the editing. I think it's only so far. I've only seen one person using a tablet to edit, but the rest just use mobile phones to edit. Okay, great. So um, the next question, still on challenges, um, would you like to share with us? Um, in other words, are you saying that more people are using? mobile phones exactly. than um, tablet and uh, you know laptops if so now we want to know are there any other um, challenges related to you know devices so for example um, with devices we know that people 
those who use mobile phones will have peculiar uh, problems compared to those with um, you know laptops all of them have their own you know challenges for mobile phone what i can say is that people may want to like use multiple tabs to be able to edit which can be very problematic and then with laptops too it probably would be very much uh, like data consuming and stuff like that or if if they they don't have the basic um, you know soft skills to you know contribute to wikipedia on mobile phones can you give us the uh, general uh, ch uh, challenges with regards to the devices in addition to what you just shared yes so um, generally the devices they use is the mobile phones and because they use the mobile phones the mobile phones comes with two major operating systems the android and the ios so those who happen to use ios find it very difficult getting the latin characters like we mentioned so that alone is a big challenge so he has a mobile phone, all right. He uses it to edit, but then he cannot get uh, the characters he needs to use in order to edit on the growing incubator. Again, those who usually use the mobile phones complain of um, storage space. And again, when they join Zoom meetings or Google meetings, uh, once the meeting is ongoing and they open up tabs, they are accessible. But once the meeting ends, they, they lose all the tabs. These are challenges that affect us a lot because during, uh, during online meetings, we share a lot of links, useful links, of course. So sometimes after the whole meeting, you have to again send a document like detailing out all the links that were shared. If not, do all those who joined via mobile phone have, just have lost it like that. Okay, so um, that is very interesting to learn. And it seems these are... Uh, really uh, challenges that um, there are real challenges that are found within most of the language media communities. Um, my next question um, is, is your community active on other Wikimedia projects? And if so, which ones are you mostly active in apart from the Gruni incubator? Okay, thank you. So um, our community is very active on Wikidata and also very active on Wikimedia Commons. Uh, that is active on Wikimedia Commons mostly uh, with regards to the uploads of multimedia files like pictures, videos, and audio files. Uh, just quite recently, there was a project on uh, uploading audio, um, audio files in a form of voice recordings. And um, that, was, that had to do with words, but it was not so much. I think just some few words that were, we did that for a test and it was uploaded on Commons. Again, uh, during the Wiki Love Soccer, Wiki Love Edge, Wiki Love Monument 2020 and uh, sorry 2021, 2022, our community participated and um, they uploaded their resources on Wikimedia Commons. For Wikidata, they've created quite a good number of items, and again, majority of them has uh, they are currently adding Gruni labels for uh, items. For instance. If we have Ghana, Ghana is um, is the English label, then they will go in there to change or to create a label for the Gruni, like a Gruni label and a Gruni description. And if there are aliases as well, they do it. Okay, good. Um, so my next question still on that uh, would be, um, now that we know that you do not just incubator Gruni, you do other uh, projects like Wikimedia Commons and Wikidata as well. Would you want to share with us if there has been like um, any reuse of re Wikimedia resources or plan to reuse um, Wikimedia resources outside Wikimedia projects? Yes. So um, outside Wikimedia projects, um, with uh, we are currently working on the West like I mentioned, the words inside the language. And our uh, plan is that um, there's this uh, group called the uh, AI group that trains uh, AI machines on words and other things. And they came out with the Kaya app. I think uh, one of the developers is even <laughs> like a proud member of our community. Uh, he's from Upper East and he speaks Gruni. So he has been on our neck to uh, for us to record these words quickly so that they can use their AI machines to train 
their devices so that they will be able to speak Gruni or uh, mutually translate Gruni into other languages and translate other languages into Gruni. Okay, so that is very good to know. But do you have other future plans of reusing, um, you know, Wikimedia resources outside Wikimedia projects? Yes, so um, just quite recently, the Gruni language was accepted as a nationwide or a national language where it's, it was going to now be studied in schools. As a result, the teachers are going to be needing these um, resources, like uh, in the form of books, in the form of uh, notes, in the form of uh, whatever, like except for their own teaching in, of this Ghanaian language. And uh, whatever content we are putting currently inside the Wikipedia platforms are going to be used outside in, in Ghana Education Service to educate people. Again, uh, we have uh, people who are usually posted to the northern, uh, to the upper east region who do not understand the language. So we are going to work with other uh, ministries like Minister of Health so that they will get resources from uh, this Wikipedia platform we are currently putting our data on so that they can be able to use them at the various hospitals, at least just the basic ones, maybe greetings. We can just come out with some snippets, data snippets to be posted on walls so that any, anybody who comes knows that, okay, good morning is this in Gruni, good afternoon is this in Gruni, just some basic snippets, and we can pu easily pull this from the Wikipedia platforms. Okay, good, excellent. Um, so now let's dive deeper into economic uh, or economic challenges. Um, my questions will be mainly uh, personal challenges as an individual and also as a community. What some of what are some of the challenges that you face in terms of economic, uh, you know, restrictions? So, first of all, do you think uh, the economy is limiting factor for you when you contribute to Wikipedia? If so, can you describe why and how? <laughs> yes, it's, it's it's actually a limiting factor. Like I mentioned earlier data has become suddenly very expensive. Sometimes when you buy the data to even contribute, um, the moment you buy it, it's like win. It, it easily goes away. Just before you finish whatever you are, t you are doing, that uh, one gig, two gig you had bought or you use your money to purchase is already gone. Meanwhile, we do all this thing on voluntary service. So um, I think we feel that if, if people are sacrificing to do these things as volunteers, um, at least they should be supported with some data allowance so that they will be able to continuously do these things freely. Because at the end of the day, the greater good of this data we are putting out there is going to be enormous, like it's going to be greater. But then uh, the person who has contributed to this is not paid in it and doesn't even need a pay. He only needs like uh, basic data, or maybe if his phone is spoiled, maybe we can support. There was this lady um, among our community. He, she was very active, and all of a sudden her phone got spoiled. I think for about three months she was borrowing people's phones to edit, and she was still doing very well. And she was just like uh, at that point the backbone of the community because her contribute. She she is studying a degree in Gruni language. And so she has a lot of resources when it comes to the Gruni languages. And her contributions are usually very valuable. So it was um, when we got some resources that we need, we supported her to repair her old phone in order to start using her old phone. So in fact, um, volunteers like myself and anybody else would need at least support of data allowance just to keep us going. Not for a pay, but just data allowance or maybe uh, if they are used laptops or used mobile phones that can help or support these community members, at least uh, that would be very uh, much appreciated. Okay, well noted. Um, now let's talk about the community in general. Does, do you think the economy is limiting factor for the growth on, and development of your Wikipedia language uh, as a community? What can, what can you say about that? Does the economy limit you as a community in terms of contributing to your language, Wikipedia? Yes, it does. Uh, the reason why I'm saying it does is because um, our community members are spread apart. They are spread across Ghana. So sometimes getting them at one particular space to train them or to give them training is always difficult. Imagine um, if you invite at least 50 people to come. at 
or even if they are going to vote. Okay, so my next question is, um, can you estimate how much you use per month if you use mobile data to contribute to Wikipedia in Gruni? Okay, so um, personally, I buy like 214 gig, which lasts usually uh, just a month and a half. Uh, that costs somewhere around uh, almost 400 cities because uh, it's 399. 399 Ghana cities. And, uh, and once I usually take it for a community training, <laughs> it will not even end the month because everybody would have to connect to it. And we all know that because data is expensive, uh, majority of the people have some of their devices not updated. So once they get connected to Wi-Fi, <laughs> it starts updating almost all the apps and it consumes the data. So usually when we are going for a training, um, and we want to buy special data for the training, we buy averagely 30 to 50 gig. And more often than not, you finish the uh, maybe six hour training and everything is drained out. Great, nice to know. Um, my next question on that is, do you use any other support systems to cover the costs in terms of internet equipments for like Wikipedia contributions? If not, tell them, um, tell us more about it. Okay, so, um, support systems so usually we have our trainings uh, at a school campus and uh, we get to use the lecture halls for free uh, we but for data we we actually have to buy sometimes we need to rent the route a, a projector from outside but if there are times uh, one of our supporting lecturers is available he usually assists us with um, a projector but then like i mentioned earlier we have spread apart community members. So when, I, when we are at Bolga to hold a training, uh, we need to rent a space, we need to rent uh, a projector, and we even have to buy data for ourselves. So we, we, we have a router now, but we need to always get data into this router in order to keep the community going. Okay, thank you so much. And then um, now let's talk about education. Um, and then the knowledge level of uh, your community members. Can you describe the level of literacy or educational level among your community members? Yes, thank you. Um, I think the level of literacy of our community members is good because uh, majority of our community members are students um, at the university who are currently studying Gruni as a language, uh, like as a course, the Gruni language. And... Um, we even have master students, and um, we have supporting staffs who, who are already professors. Uh, Professor Avia is always there to support us, especially on controversial terms and controversial ways. He's a professor in Grune. We have people who have PhD and others who have masters. So, I, I, or, like, we can all rock our shoulders and say, okay, our, our community is well littered enough to uh, be contributing to Wikipedia. That is very good. Um, we need more like educators and teachers and also like students to be able to grow our communities. My next question is, do educator, educational institutions in your community or region use your language as one of the medium of instructions? Yes, right now um, the Gruni language is being taught in Upper East region and students are studying the Gruni language. At what level? So um, currently it's being studied at the primary school level and at the colleges level. The colleges, uh, colleges of education who are training teachers to go out there to impact knowledge have uh, Gruni language as a, one of the Ghanaian languages for students to study. And so they, they do some of these things just to provide a knowledge base for the future generation because the, uh, the subject is being taught at the primary school level. And these colleges of education uh, would be teachers go to these uh, primary school level to teach. So they go to impact the knowledge. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, my next question is, are you encouraged or discouraged to speak in your language in educational institutions and in your community? Are you encouraged or discouraged? If you are encouraged, at what level are they encouraging students or kids to speak your language? If they are discouraged, what level do they discourage people from speaking the local language in your community or institutions? Thank you so much. So um, 
uh, this question is very technical. It's technical because um, we the language is for us, but unfortunately, the educational system hasn't uh, given us enough platform to exhibit our own languages. Even when you speak um, Gruni in school, <laughs> your name is written for vernacular. Uh, they tell you that this is not a space for you to speak Gruni. So we only get to speak our language during a uh, Ghanaian language period. Again, even at homes, instead of our parents uh, speaking the language to some of the kids, some parents don't do that. Some parents want to have uh, their children speak English like they were born in England. But uh, on the average, growing language is spoken almost everywhere uh, in Upper East region. And even it's, it's spoken in different dialects. When you go to the market, that is a medium of communication. You go to some offices, that is a medium of communication, especially once you go in there and uh, you get to uh, greet and they respond in Guruni, then you know that, well, the, the whole conversation is going to happen in Guruni. But then if you go in starting with English, chances are that you continue the whole conversation in English. Wow, that is very, very, very interesting to know. Um, well, let's uh, hope that people will continue to speak local languages with their words as home at home, and also the educational system will favor most of these kids so that they can learn the language as a first um, step in order to, you know, master English language or any other foreign language they want to learn. Um, we are very excited to learn about these uh, great. Um, you know, revelations about your language and how the community, uh, how it is doing in the community and also educational institutions in Ghana. Um, now, let's talk about um, other things. Do you have existing plan or collaborations with educational institutions? If so, can you share more about them? Do you have existing plans, like, like existing collaborations with other institutions? Yes, we have existing collaboration. Currently, um, we are collaborating with the um, Ejumako campus, uh, that's a University of Education, Winneba. We are again collaborating with the uh, UCC, that's a, a University of uh, Cape Coast. We have um, like some, we've been working with their students and working with the institution um, to get their students trained on uh, how to edit on Wikipedia, particularly the Gruni uh, incubator. So we have uh, we have some level of partnership with some institutions. Nice, nice, nice. That's very nice to know. Um, my next questions will be based on social. Um, how would you describe the diversity in terms of gender, age, geography, educational level, and also uh, you know any other diversity in your community of the contributors in your language community? How would you describe it? So tell us more about the, their age, what kind of age groups are in the community, they are, where are they based, their educational level, and also, um, you know, gender. Are they more male than female? Can you tell us the ratio or the average percentage? Okay, so um, I think the minimum age you can get in our community is like 19 years and above. Uh, so 19 years and above, I think for now we don't even have a senior high school uh, student as a contributor because they are limited in the usage of mobile phones. So majority of our com uh, contributors are students who have completed senior high school. And as a result, they, are, they have passed the teen ages they are in their 20s uh, onwards. When it comes to gender, we, we, uh, we, we are male dominated. We're working on how to expand to cover the women folk. And um, Geography. go, geographical wise, we are spread apart. Like we have people, uh, the language is spoken in Ghana, it's also spoken in Togo, and it's also spoken in Cote d'Ivoire because, uh, and Burkina Faso, because they are neighboring communities. Majority of our people move to those places to settle, and as a result, they get to speak the language. But in Ghana, we are spread across almost the nooks and crannies of Ghana. All right. Great, great, great. Thank you so much for sharing all this with us. Um, so my next question is, does your community participate in Wikimedia event outside your community or engage with other Wikimedia communities? Why? If not, why not? 
Yes, we participate in a lot of projects. For us, <laughs> we are like the fly. Whatever that other communities are doing that we feel is good and can also help increase content on our platform, we just go to tap on it and also see how best we can collaborate. Even at the moment, the community is doing the Wiki Vibrance, which is to celebrate uh, youthful exuberance, like uh, the activities of the youth that is helping to... Um, was the name to support our way of life globally so uh, we always hear of people celebrating the old we should also give chance uh, to like a particular period where we can celebrate the young ones like myself and you who are also trying to change the the whole story and change the uh, the history so this uh, month this whole month is has been dedicated to celebrate youth and it's uh, known as the wiki vibrance uh, project we've done uh, wiki uh, what's the name the wiki loves folklore wiki loves uh, earth wiki loves uh, monuments which were hosted by the dagban Wikimedia and user group and they were even global events that we participated in so we get to participate in different um, events that is being organized by other people Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, my next question, can you describe how the community has developed in the last few years? Wow, the community has developed so steadily and so fast because uh, looking at when we started and where we are now, I can say that we are developing so fast. And the reason I'm saying this is because of the numbers. Uh, that We started with just a very few people editing and today we can like when we are hosting a program, we can get up to 30, 40 people attending. And afterwards, we can get up to like 20 people actively editing. Though it's off and on, but at least uh, the community, uh, we, we now have a lot of people now editing. So we are growing. Wow, great. So I think we are almost getting to the tail end of the conversation. And uh, I would like to find out if there's, um, you know, any top priorities for your language community uh, in the next few years or maybe the future? What are your top three future plans? Okay, so our future plan is that uh, we are looking at uh, hopefully either end of this year or even uh, by middle of next year, we should have uh, we should be having our own Wikipedia platform where we will now call it the Gruny Wikipedia. Again. Uh, we're looking at, uh, in the very near future, uh, injecting or having more resource, grooming resources online so that people will get to use um, these resources for good. I think these are the two uh, most important uh, goals we have set for ourselves from now till next year. Okay, wonderful. So um, finally, uh, just to wrap up with things, um, would you tell us any other thing that you think might be useful for this research that I did not cover during the conversation? Okay, so um, what I would like to add here that we have not talked about is uh, community diversification. Here, uh, if you look at uh, different, the different languages that we speak in Ghana, uh, majority of the languages are still not uh, being incubated. And uh, maybe going forward, we can use this as uh, like as a language hub or as a member of the committee for uh, indigenous languages. Um, I would plead that you kind of work around things to get some of these languages incubated so that those that are at the verge of going to extinctions will be revived. And those that are literally not online, just like our own language, will also begin crawling onto the online space. Okay, thank you so much. Um, all in all, what do you consider to be the top three challenges for your Wikipedia community to grow? Um, try to rank them in order. The top three challenges for your language to grow. The top three challenges for our language to grow. So it could be like economic challenges. So what are the most difficult things that you face in your community right now? Okay. Top three. Okay, so the, the the top three challenges we face, number one is economic challenges. 
economic challenge because uh, we need we, we, we constantly need data and we need devices, at least for people who have the zeal, who have the interest, who have the skills, but do not have the equipment to edit. Again, um, we we'll need, uh, we'll need uh, skills, skills support or leadership support. So if we can have other uh, leaders from other user groups or other communities who can come to give our people, especially the team, capacity building training, that would equip them very well in order to also train others. That is something that uh, we are currently lacking. And um, lastly, we need uh, people who always have us at, at, at the back because majority of our community members get blocked when they are editing. So we need like administrators who can come to our aid so that we can always call on them anytime we are having training in order not to impede the progress of our training and the progress of our work. All right, thank you so much. Um, this is the end of the conversation and I'm really excited to learn more about your community and I'm particularly excited about the uh, shared challenges you have you know, highlighted here as it has reflected in most of the conversations we had with regards to language communities. Um, thank you so much for your time and we hope that these um, you know, findings would help build your community and also support you in a way that you need. And you know, hopefully we will continue to work together as a hub and further support you. My name is Sadek Shahadu. I am the West African Language Coordinator at Art and Feminism. And thank you. Bye.